So this is what comes with it here. They got your owner's manual. They also give you this little pamphlet about the battery because the battery is a lithium ion battery. Okay, yeah. Probably and you cannot that. charge it with a regular charger. You okay. gotta have a lithium ion charger for it. Okay. Also give you these two plugs. When you take the rear sets off. Okay. If you want, these go where the rear sets go on the frame. Mm -hmm. They got their own bolts to bolt them in. Okay. There's one, there's two, yep. two bolts. And you just plug them into right here, basically. They go right in. Okay. And then you, there's a little screw that you can put in and keep them plugged. All right. Yeah. So as you see, the owner's manual is hefty. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is the rear seat. I'm gonna show you how the rear seat goes. This is a spare key. I put it on a different um, key tag, basically. Okay. And this is a code for the ignition. Okay. In case you lose the key. All right. If you have that code, we can get you the key from Aprilia. Okay, cool. Okay. So I'm gonna put the key in this little baggie with everything else. All right. So for the seat, we need the bike. That way we can walk around a little bit better. I had one of the first RSV4s. Um, it was a 2010. Uh -huh. When it first came out, mm -hmm. I had one. Oh, okay. When I was doing track days on it. So, <laughs> yeah. so basically, the key goes on the side right here. There's a keyhole. Okay. You just turn it, and this whole thing pops up. All right. Okay. And. Basically, you got a couple of relays back here and a couple of pieces of electronics, nothing crazy. They put a little Allen wrench in here and a rear seat in case you need to get to the battery. So there's two bolts, one here and one here. Okay. Just push the foam out of the way, put the Allen wrench and take the two bolts out and then you can get this whole seat out and then the battery's right under there. Okay. But this comes off and the seat goes right in. And basically, this has to clamp down. So, I'm just gonna find where it goes. It goes on just like that. That's it. It's okay. okay. It's a lot better than the little piece <laughs> they give you. Right. 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 When you put the seat in, make sure these stay on there. Okay. Because they go right here. And right. they prevent the seat from going down in the front underweight. Okay. They just support the seat basically. Okay. So. Yeah. All right. Let's put the seat back on and we'll start going over the controls. All right. So let's look over the controls on the, on the handlebar, see what we got here. On the right side, you basically got the kill switch, the start button, and this button acts, this, when, when you start the bike, it becomes the mode button. You can change different modes right through that button too, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the, you got the brake lever, and then you got the adjustment for the brake too. You can adjust the lever in and out, depending on how big your hands are. On this side, you got the high and low beam. You can flash it, mm -hmm. or if you flip it out, it becomes a high beam. Okay. Okay. You got a little joystick for the dash. You can go left or right, up and down. You got the pit speed limiter here. If you're racing, you can use it. And right here, you got a joystick that goes up and down and in. You can use it for your cruise control or your wheelie control, depending on what you set it through the dash to control. Okay. Okay. And this is your turn signals. Left and right, push to cancel. And then on the bottom, you got the horn right here. On the right, you got your multimedia platform. That's got the Bluetooth 
function where you can sync your phone to the dash. Basically, you gotta download the Aprilia app. Right, did that already? No. Not yet. Okay. okay. And then on this side, you get a joystick that has a plus and minus mm -hmm. button. The plus, that controls your traction control. Okay. And in the traction control settings, you got eight settings. Zero, which is off, and then eight, which is the highest traction control level. You gotta think about it this way. The higher the number, the more assist you're gonna get from the bike. Okay. So eight is not gonna let you spin at all. It's gonna control the bike. One is gonna let you spin quite a bit. And then between one and eight, you're right in between. You're gonna have, you can tune it where you want it to be. And I'll show you how to change that. Okay. Okay. Oh, um, quick question. Okay, yeah. so for the Bluetooth thing, is it there, I think it's this, is that an aftermarket thing you have to get in order to, for that to work? Mm, no, on the factory, they come standard. Oh, okay. That comes equipped with it. Okay, cool. It yeah, comes equipped with it. Um, they use uh, on the regular RSV, mm -hmm. it isn't something you can add. Okay. But on the factory, it's a standard. Okay. It's always been a standard thing on the, on the factory. All right. Um, there's four positions on the key. As far as positions, you got on and off. You got steering lock. You got to push the key in, turn it to the left. Then you got steering lock. And then you got steering lock with the position lights on. So I can take the key out. Mm -hmm. This is locked. Yeah, I got my LED in the front. Oh, okay. On. And then I got the LED tail light on. Okay, so the LED is this little thing. Yeah. Okay. So in Europe, they park on the side of the streets, really congested streets in the city, and they go in for dinner for three, four hours. Okay. So they park on the side of the street to be visible at night with all kinds of cars going by them. That's what they do. Oh, they lock okay. the steering. They turn the position lights on so you can see the bike. There you go. Okay. Yep. Nice. It's an LED. It doesn't really yeah, run it that doesn't much. suck that much energy out of the battery at all. Okay. So you can make it visible, walk away, let it sit like that for three, four hours. It should be good. Yeah. And then to get the key back to the off position, you got to push it in a little bit and then back to the off position. Okay. When we turn the key on, you're going to see the dash. It's going to have its introduction. It's going to show you a little bit of a, you know, the Aprilia RSV symbol. And then you're back to the main screen. First thing it's going to ask us for, if we haven't established yet, is a pin number. The pin number is basically the connection between the key and the ECU. The key is chipped. So somebody tries to break the ignition with a screwdriver, they can never start the bike because the ECU won't recognize the key. Hmm. But if you're in the middle of nowhere and the key goes bad, how is it gonna recognize you're the rightful owner for the bike? It's gonna ask for the pin code when the key is not recognized. Hmm. Okay. So the reason it's asking us to put a pin in the ECU is it's never been established yet. Okay. So we'll do that in a second. We'll put a pin code in there, something that you can remember and you, we can write it in the owner's manual too, and or put it in your phone, whatever. That way, for some reason, the key goes bad, you can still turn it on, and if it doesn't recognize the key, you can bypass it by putting the pin code and the bike will start. Okay. The first thing you're gonna notice, probably just like your ZX-10, the ABS and the traction control light are flashing because the, the ECU hasn't recognized the wheel sensors yet. When you turn the traction control or the ABS light off, they start, they stop doing uh, blinking like that. They go solid mm. when you turn either of them off. But the blinking will go off after five miles an hour. When you start driving it, it'll go off. The other light you're gonna see right here is a, that's a kickstand down. Okay. And then the one on top is a check engine light because there's no, it's not on yet. Once we start it, it'll go off. And then Jerry, on top, you're gonna notice the tack, your gear indicator. You're gonna have your lean angle sensor. Tells you what, you can see it. If we lean the bike, yep. it's gonna, this is your zero right here. And then it, as, you, as you lean it over, it's gonna tell you what angle you're at. 
And that the cool thing about the multimedia platform is through the app, when you do a track day, it keeps track of your lean angle. Mm -hmm. It'll show you how much lean you're getting through the corners, which is awesome. At the bottom here, we see brake and throttle. That's a pressure when you put on the brake to let you know how much brake pressure you're putting. And then the throttle tells you the throttle opening as well. Okay. And then right here, you got the information display. Right now it says odometer zero miles. You can take the joystick right here and then you can go up to the odometer. When it's green, you can change it. To the right and to the left, you can go trip meter A, time on the trip, maximum speed on the trip, average miles or average speed on the trip, average fuel economy, instantaneous fuel economy, back to odometer. And you got two sets of trip meter, A and B, okay? If you hold it to the right, you can go into the track mode where you have a big um, lap time, okay? You can activate that by holding the joystick to the right. When you got the odometer highlighted, to go back to it, you just hold it to the right while well, you can see your lap times. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It does everything. Okay, we're gonna turn it to the left, hold it to the left, and it's gonna go back to the trip meter. Okay? From there, you can use the joystick as well to go and change the ABS settings on the fly. Wheelie control, Aprilia wheelie control, and then Aprilia launch control, if you're, if you're riding at the drag strip. Or you can go into the menu where you can change everything then into the APRC settings. APRC settings are your ABS, traction control, wheelie control, launch control, quick shifter on the up and down. Right now the down is working and the up is working. That means you got a blip function when you downshift without using the clutch. And then you can exit right here. APRC configuration is gonna, the pit limiter, you can activate that. Right now it's not active. Rear wheel calibration, if you change the rear wheel size, Okay. You can calibrate it. Left hand switch, which is this switch. Right now it's set on cruise control to control the cruise. You can go in. When you're, it's a red, you can change it. Oh. And you can. You can, now you can use it for wheelie control. Mm -hmm. Okay, see? Mm -hmm. It's got two settings basically but we're gonna leave it on cruise for you. Okay. This is a V4 multimedia platform pairing. You can go in and you can basically, well, you can pair your phone to it. Download the app first. Okay. Yeah. And then we we'll keep going here. Um, under menu, you can uh, use a lap timer function. You can change the shift light. Okay. And then I'm gonna go over that with you because when you're in break in, yeah. For the first 621 miles, they want it, they want it to keep under um, 7,500 RPMs. You can go over a little bit, it's not a big deal, but don't hold it above that. And then at, at a thousand, uh, you can go up to 9,500 RPMs. It's all in the book, I'll show you. Okay. I'll go over that with you. And then under configuration, you can change the clock, the units, the language, the service. That's for our service guys, they go in and reset the service mileage for you. And then we can exit. It is 3.05, correct? Yeah, so that's the right time for you right here. Okay. This is gonna tell you this little uh, orange emblem. Mm -hmm. That means the blip, fun the blip function is active on the quick shifter. Okay. Above it is your coolant temperature. And next to it is for your MP uh, uh, multimedia player functions. So when you have text coming, this will light up. When you're, pa when you're paired with a bike, this will be on. When you have a headset paired with a bike, this will be on. 
rider and passenger when you're streaming music this will be on and then when you're recording video this will be on as well and the wrench at the end is for your service reminders okay okay as far as uh, lights on the dash there's your high beam you can see it in blue i'm just showing you where the high beam is mm -hmm. and the low fuel light is going to be right up here that okay. will come in too when you activate the cruise control hold the button in the cruise control light will start flashing till you click it again once mm -hmm. and then that will hold your speed okay and then you can accelerate and decelerate through that button up and down as well okay i need that when i go to indy yeah there you go <laughs> cruising for a long time yeah that's pretty much it when we get it outside i'm gonna start it for you and then i'll show you how to change ride modes mm -hmm. your track race and sport okay okay all right and it's all done through this or you can do it through the dash when the bike is running. Okay. If the bike is not running, it won't change the ride modes. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. There's your quick shifter. You can see the solenoid on it. Yep. Mm. Once you take off in first gear, let the clutch out. You really don't need to touch the clutch on that bike. As long as the R's are above 3000 RPMs, it's a lot smoother. You can downshift. And for the quick shifter to work in the blick function, you gotta be off the throttle when you downshift. Mm for it to work. For the upshift, you can be at any throttle opening. You can be wide open, you just shift it. The X10 has that, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But it doesn't have the downshift. Uh, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't come standard, but I have it on mine. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. once I flashed it. Yeah. And then on checking the oil, it's super easy. It already has spools from the factory. Oh, I was going to ask you yep. what size was the spools. Okay. Yep. It comes with the spools. All the RS3-4s come with spools. All right. So all I have to do is put it on the rear stand to check the oil. All right. And the oil is really simple to, to check. It's that dipstick right here. Okay. Yep. So that's where you check it and that's where you add oil if you need to. The bike already has case protectors on it from the factory. That's just the plastic cover on top of the case. It's a really good way to protect the bike too. Now, is this is this carbon fiber? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. And that's good thing fiber. I didn't buy one. <laughs> yep. That's carbon fiber. That's carbon fiber. Front fender is carbon good fiber. Fun. Okay. Let's well, so need that, the back one. The back one is that. okay. And that a crop of bitch carbon fiber too. That's, yeah. that's and these right here. And this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be all carbon fiber. 